Well, Luke is my favorite gospel. I tell people, you know, uh, some people love John. I think John's okay. Luke is an amazing gospel. And it is because in it, you know, Luke is, it wants desperately to convey the idea that Jesus, uh, the, the gospel of Jesus is the gospel of the nobodies. That, you know, over and over again, more than in any other gospel, Jesus is concerned about the marginalized, the pushed down, the made to feel small, the second class. And that's part of what I, I, I read it for the first time when I was 14 and I wasn't even a Christian. And it was, I got to the end of that gospel and I decided to give my life to Jesus. That so I thought, if this is what Jesus is like and he's showing us what God is like, I want to follow this man. And so, you know, the, the theme verse for me in Luke is Luke 19.10 where Jesus is, uh, he's in Jericho and he's on his way to be crucified. But before he goes to Jerusalem, he goes to Jericho. He heals a couple of blind people, one or two, depending on the gospel you read. And then he walks through the center of town and he comes to the sycamore tree and he finds Zacchaeus up in the sycamore tree, calls him by name and says, Zacchaeus, I want to come and eat supper at your house. And the crowd gasps because he's, this is not just a tax collector, he's a chief tax collector. And, uh, and, and he's astounded. And, and the response he has to Jesus, you know, he's climbed the tree because nobody will let him close enough to see Jesus and he's heard about the wonder worker and he shimmies up the tree and, and, and when Jesus says this to him, at that moment he says, Lord, half of all I have I give to the poor, and whatever, I, whatever wrong I've done to others, I'm going to make amends. And, uh, and Jesus says, you know, salvation has come to this house. And I just think the impact of, of Jesus looking at a man who clearly there was something he was yearning for, and he was clearly not welcome among the Jewish people. And Jesus goes right to him and calls him by name. I love that, that Jesus calls him by name, invites himself over to his house. And, and so Jesus is having supper with Zacchaeus and all of his friends, and you get the sense that the disciples aren't even in the house. They're outside uncomfortable because Jesus is eating with those people. And I mean, they're used to it, but Zacchaeus is like, hey, it's just too much. And they're outside. And, uh, you know, I picture in my own community, if it was somebody who ran the strip clubs in downtown Kansas City, and Jesus comes and says, I want to eat at your house tonight. And all of his friends, you know, would be all of these people who are also sinners. And I picture Jesus laughing and telling them stories of the kingdom and what God is really like. And, and uh, you know, knowing a week from now he's going to be crucified and it's four people like this. And, the, and the, the religious leaders are outside and they're wagging their fingers and pointing at Jesus in there. Why does he eat with people like that? And Jesus gets up from the table and this is how I picture it in my mind. He goes to one of those religious leaders and I picture him poking him in the chest, jaw clenched and saying, you just don't get it, do you? Angry because, I mean, the, there's this passion, you know, for these people. And, uh, and then this is where Luke 19, 10 comes in and I've asked our entire congregation to memorize this verse many times. Uh, you just don't get it. The Son of Man came to seek and to save those who are lost. And this is Jesus' personal mission is I've come here. I've come here to give my life. I've come here to I've poured out my life. I'm going to lay down my life to seek and to save those who are lost. And which of us you know, isn't lost and in need of that kind of saving? And so the rest of the gospel illustrates that, whether it's you know, Luke 7 and the prostitute who weeps at Jesus' feet, or Luke 15, the parable of the lost things, or Luke 19, you know, and then you get to Jesus on the cross and only in Luke's gospel does he cry out, none of the other gospels, he cries out, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do as he hangs on the cross. It's just, just magnificent.